welcome to the Fiber Tales podcast. My name is Lærke and I'm coming to you from the southern part of Finn in Denmark where I live with my partner and my little girl and in a few weeks time another family member. We will see how things go when he decides to come out. Uh, this is a knitting podcast in case you're new. Welcome and... Uh, If not, I've been doing this podcast for about a year, so if you've been following all along, it's so nice to have you here every week or week. It's not a weekly podcast, it's probably more like a bi-weekly or monthly, or, and then I'm gone in periods. Um, yeah, but it's really lovely to have you back. Uh, yeah, and as I said, it's mainly about knitting. Sometimes there would be some sewing and some other crafts, but mainly knitting and I as I said yeah I've been doing this podcast for about a year now uh, I started it last year at some point I think I looked in my bullet journal and I put the show notes in November so I thought it was from November and I already announced my one year anniversary but then I looked on in, on YouTube and it seems like I started I posted the first episode in January maybe so doesn't really matter because it was around that time I was thinking about doing the podcast and I was really excited about getting started but it took me some time to finally make the jump and just do it because it's a big thing and talking to yourself to your phone and putting it up on YouTube is really nerve-wracking uh, if anyone wants to watch and it turned out people watch so I'm really happy that I'm not just doing this on my own uh, yeah I so much has happened since my last podcast episode so in case um, you've been following my vlogmas you have an idea what has been happening I've been trying to do vlogmas it actually went pretty well I managed to do most in the beginning and then in the end it got a little more complicated it's uh, as I talked about before I have limited um, Uh, data on my uh, internet abonnement or yeah how you say so I just have to be really careful not to use up all the data because uploading videos take a lot um, so I have to run to the library every time and since when Christmas rolled around it was just not on my priority list to go every day to the library before it was easier because my daughter had to go to the daycare and or the kindergarten and when she was in kindergarten I could jump to the library but it's not really working so well like that anymore so and I miss doing uh, vlog not vlogmas I miss doing re regular podcasts so I really wanted to end this year off with a regular podcast I feel like I have a lot to talk about and yeah so there might be some repetitions if you've been watching vlogmas but generally I don't I will try to do this more about knitting and not so much about life related stuff so if you're more interested in that then go and watch some of the vlogmas episodes i yeah i have a lot a lot a lot i think where i left off last time was just before the launch of my yarn um and that was a crazy experience and so much fun and just again i didn't know what to expect and it was it was just amazing i have shipped out all the packages except one uh, because of some Uh, agreement with the person so that was planned uh, I will try to ship that one out today but it just felt amazing emptying all the big uh, sacks of yarn and getting them out in the world and seeing little posts popping up on Instagram and other places um, with the yarn and people liking it and it makes me very happy so that was a really fun experience and I gotten questions about when there will be more yarn so just to address that there won't be any more yarn for some time because I'm going on maternity leave so I'm not gonna work um, as such I don't think I can stop knitting but I'm not gonna be working uh, and the yarn takes quite some time before it's sheared to go to the mill and they have a four month waiting time as well um, That on top of that it's a small flock it's my parents sheep and that's I think there are only six mother sheep at the moment and then the lambs so the lambs of course would be sheared as well and the ram um, 
but that means uh, last time I had two shearings to make up the, the amount of uh, fleece needed for the two different colors and I will need the same this time. They have a minimum at the mill so you need to have I think it's 15 kilos uh, for them to do one batch and 15 kilos of fleece and that means I can get one color only if I don't have more than I have to have 30 kilos to get two colors. That's practically what I'm saying. Anyways, all that to say, there will be more yarn probably in the fall or next winter. So it will take some time, but there will be more because it was a lot of fun and mm, I thought I would like to do it again, but just, I cannot have any, there's no more left. It's completely sold out. So, excuse me, I, I have hiccups. Um, that's because of pregnancy. Somebody is pushing around in my belly. So uh, just excuse those and yeah, what else has happened? So that was the la yarn <laughs> launch of my yarn. And um, also I released three patterns in a relatively short time, simply because I was, I wanted to finish it all off before uh, going on maternity leave, have the patterns out there and just close down, which also means it might be a bit harder to get pattern support from me. I know for some reason it seems there's a mistake or a problem with the link to the video for this shawl, which I will talk a little bit more about, but about the mini popcorns. Uh, so from the pattern, some people had problems opening the link. Um, if you write me, I will try to answer you, but just know that if you write me when the baby comes, I might be some time uh, to answer and yeah, just to say that uh, any kind of pattern support will be slower or not existing because I'm actually not working in that way so uh, but I understand that pattern support is part of uh, yeah I mean I wouldn't like you to be stuck somewhere because the link for video is not working so I try my best to do pattern support when I can um, and yeah so I wanted to talk about those three designs a little bit more just in a bit and also I have been working on the big secret project which was a submission for Lane or a design I did for Lane or Leine. I actually I call it Leine in my head but every time I speak English I say Lane. Um, Leine is the Finnish word, uh, it means wave and it's the magazine that I guess you all know. Um, it's a beautiful magazine and I'm so proud to be part of this next issue. It will be out in February I think it's issue 7 and they already shared some sneak peeks of my design so if you jump over to uh, Lane magazine on Instagram you can see sneak peeks of uh, my design which is uh, it just makes me so happy and um, I will talk much more about that when it's out I feel like I want to tell the whole story but it it's gonna happen once the design is out um, so I will come back to that later and I don't know how much time I will have then. So again, um, I will try to talk about it whenever I can. So the three designs, I managed to release uh, a little pattern that I wanted to release actually before, but it just didn't happen because of other designs like the liner uh, taking over a little bit. But here it is, it's just a simple pair of mitts. I've shown them before a little bit, but I think it's the first time I can show them in all the glory. <laughs> These are uh, has a simple rib um, twisted twisted rib, so half twisted. It's only twisted on one side, and you knit them in the round. With the I love this detail where you can see the thumb gusset coming out of the twisted rib, and on the front it has this V shape uh, with a little motif. It's actually a little popcorn or like bubbles uh, and stitches um, it increases and decreases that creates this little flower motif and then on the thumb and on the top you have again a little bit more of twisted rib they are very easy to do or very easy but I don't feel like they're complicated and they are very nice and snug they are knit out of tuku wool sock yarn so they have a bit of I think it's polyamide which means they are actually let me just check because I think <laughs> I have not the <laughs> mobile here it is I had the they knit out of a 50 gram skein and actually had yarn left over um, 
yeah so Togo will suck and it is as I said 80% finish wool and 20% polyamide and it is this lovely colorway called Uyo which means shy and I just love it so much. I purchased this yarn at EYF at Edinburgh Yarn Festival from Isolde Teague's booth. Sorry if I keep looking on me touching the yarn but it's a really beautiful yarn and the colorway is abs absolutely gorgeous. It's this mauvey grey uh, color and these are just perfect for me for biking for going out but I wanted them out a bit earlier because that's when the weather was more for for mitts or uh, now I use gloves it's too cold but they're just really nice sturdy um, fingerless mitts or gloves however you want to call them and I'm really happy with how they turned out they, they're out in two sizes so in a size extra small small which is my size I have really tiny wrists so I wanted to yeah but and there's a medium large and it's a bit bigger to have the pattern um, following the same pattern so in case you are unsure I would go for the smaller size uh, or knit the smaller size so I think that's all I want to say about these uh, they're out on Ravelry they're called Lue Lue is one of the small islands in the uh, close to where I live and I used to go there a lot as a child so I already named a few of my patterns after the islands around here. We have a lot of little islands on the southern part of Denmark and I just thought to keep going. It's mainly my uh, accessory patterns that I named after the islands so it was quite fitting. So these are the Lue mitts and yeah that's it and they're really as you see they're not that big but they fit quite well the hand and they take up so little yarn that it's really satisfying because normally what are you going to do with a 150 gram skein like this it's yeah and this sock yarn is a fingering i think but it's like a thick almost like a dk doesn't say here but it's quite thick so they make a really nice warm mitten so that was one pattern that I managed to get out and I also managed to get out I, I shared these quite a lot so but I will just share them I'm wearing them at the moment because they are the only thing keeping me warm these are the Lumi socks and thank you for everyone who helped me decide on the name Lumi means snow in Finnish yeah it was snow I get confused because there were so many names I think it was snow yeah and I knit these out of Alafa Slopey um, and the idea was to make a really nice and cozy warm pair of house socks so this is a non uh, it's not reinforced yarn it's just 100% wool Icelandic wool and I made them with a Latvian braid on top which is actually made from uh, two strands of um, Letlopi and I no one of my testers knit the sock in two strands of lead lobby so two strands of lead lobby would be the same at least worked for this tester as the lead lobby uh alafas lobby sorry it's alafas is a thicker version of lead lobby so they're pretty much the same it's um single twist single ply yarn and they just have a really nice and big cuff i made slip stitches down the front and the back for a nice little detail they have this uh, braid at, on, at the end of the Latvian braid of course that's you can change it up as you like and a heel flap and gusset that's very easy and simple to do and in the front I made the toes uh, pointy because I wanted them to have this little elf elf toe um and also because my inspiration for the socks was the uh the finnish or the sami um the sami traditional boots uh, i'm not gonna try to pronounce the name uh, but i can put it here on the screen that are either made of reindeer uh, skin or of uh, like felted wool and at least the reindeer skins have this normally they have like a rolled up toe and I really like that so I I took a little bit of that into the toe here so it's a bit bit off-centered so your big toe will kind of have the point 
Um, so they're not the same. You have to make a right and a left foot. I'm gonna put it back on because they are really, <laughs> my toes are freezing when I don't have them on. I can't show you my foot with them on, but there are pictures on Ravelry. And uh, yeah, they, these were so much fun to do and they're really quick knit. So if you need a little Christmas knit and or if you're new to socks, I would recommend these. Um, the Latvian braid, of course, is a little more complicated technique, but it's not really that complicated. And I left a video in there uh, linking to, um, how is she called, Cake and Vikings. Um, and she has a really great video explaining how to do a Latvian braid. So I didn't even feel like making my own because her video is so clear and so well worked out and I thought I would happily link to that one. So there's a link for that video and the rest is relatively easy. So I think even beginners can do it. And of course you could leave out the braid and just have a pair of simple, very simple socks and get familiar with the sock, um, the sock technique. The only thing I maybe did that's a little more, it's I picked up the gusset with the left hand needle. So what you simply do is you, you pick up uh, into the knitted work. You don't, normally if you, you can pick up with the right hand, you use the, the working yarn to kind of knit as you pick up, or you pick up the stitches with the working yarn. When you pick up with the left hand needle, you just pick up the loops that are already knit. So that is a bit more, um, I want to say complicated, but it's just if you're not used to that, you have to realize what you're doing. You're not knitting as you pick up or picking up new stitches. You're picking up from the old stitches. There are also videos of that on, on YouTube and I don't think it's that complicated, but what it does, let me show again. Um, if you can see it here where we have the gusset, normally you can risk getting little big, a bit bigger holes when you pick up the stitches. And when you knit, pick up with the left hand needle, and then I knit them twisted on the way back. That does that eliminates the problem with the holes, at least in my experience. So, but you can totally just pick up the normal way, and as long as you get the right amount of stitches, that should be fine. Okay, <clears throat> so I'm. There might be some. There might be some small cuts in this video today because I'm not home alone and now they just came in from outside, my partner and daughter, and they are now in the kitchen making lunch, which is super nice. He's, my partner is so great taking <laughs> because I cannot, I cannot podcast if she's running around. She's very talkative and all the time doing something new. So I, um, yeah, he's uh, there in the kitchen. There might be some noises. And there might be some more cuts if they come out. This room I'm in is not closed, so I cannot really close the door and be private, but it's still the place with the nicest light. And as you can see, this light, the sun has come out a little bit. So it's super, it's much better now. I don't feel like I look so ghostly. <laughs> okay, so that happened before I thought. I feel like this episode will have a lot of editing happening, but that's okay. I uh, talked talked about the two first um, design design releases, and this is the last one, and the very anticipated both for me and I know a few others. Um, it's a shawl that I started knitting on at the end of the summer, I think, and it took some time uh, for several reasons, but I am so happy with how it turned out. This is the Hulipa shawl. I can take it off for a second. This is the shawl. And it's huge. Oy. Okay, here we go. It's huge and as you can see it's a bit um, transparent so I knitted at a looser gauge. It's a light fingering, fingering weight yarn, although I would say fingering because it has a lot of structure so it doesn't, it has a lot to uh yeah it, it has a more, bit more body to the um, to the strand oh my god <laughs> talking so this is the um, it's it's pretty much just a simple triangular shaped 
uh, shawl for the most part and then I wanted it to have this uh, uh, interesting body so uh, body border so for the body of the shawl it just has these little uh, mini popcorns on bubbles or knobs or whatever you want to call them and it has um, the spine is maybe a little bit different I really wanted it not to have yarn overs or yeah I did it um, with lifted increases and I really like the effect that gives and it has then I you you can bind off or you can work it uh, with live stitches but you work an applied border and actually that's what took me some time to figure out because I don't have much experience with shawl knitting and um, just because I never knit many shawls myself so I kind of have to figure out things as I go or, in, or come up with new ideas myself it's not that I say I invent everything but I just don't have the oh I can use that technique from this uh, design I done before I never done a design like this before so I just had to figure it out myself but I'm pretty sure I'm not the first one doing it like this that's what I'm trying to say so uh, what you pretty much do is you work the tip first so this part and then you apply the border uh, up on both sides so as you can see it has a mirrored tip here and has uh, a pattern with little twisted stitches that look like leaves and it has a cable running up on both sides and this is where you apply the border so on each side and yeah so you just attach the border all the way up and then one thing I really wanted <laughs> it's so big one thing I really wanted to have um, noises from the kitchen I really wanted to have was a triangular shaped top of the shawl because I've seen other applied borders that kind of just go stop here and that would be the easiest thing to do because once you get here um, you have to start changing changing the shape so I just uh, there's a little chart for this part so this whole pattern is both written and charted at least for the borders there are five charts here everywhere there are five charts and one of the charts then is just for the top of the corner so you get this nice triangular corner which I think it looks really nice when it just continues out into a uh, yeah triangle and I made tassels because I love tassels and yes so <laughs> my lunch just arrived which is very nice but I want to finish talking about this first it's gonna be a lot of um, yeah interruptions so as you can see it's the same on the other side the just has a tip and a tassel and the last tassel is on the end so three tassels I am really happy with how this the border turned out when I was working on it before blocking it looked a bit uh, like it's scrunched up because of course you have here you you have like how to explain that this is worked back and forth and this is worked with the from top down so the fabrics are meeting each other on a in two different directions and that's why it's an applied border that's why you cannot just keep knitting uh, to have this so that can have some issues uh, depending on the uh, the gauge and so on the row gauge versus um, uh, how do you say uh, stitch gauge so it's uh, it turned out really as I wanted to and I'm so happy with the details and everything um, yeah and what more do I want to say about it is it's knit out of black yarns samite uh, which is unfortunately a discontinued colorway so I cannot um, it doesn't exist anymore but I know you can still get it a few places and actually when I got this again at EYF I'm really happy because I'm using up a lot of my EYF stash I got this at EYF and I have um, I only bought two skeins and I of course needed three or two and a half it it takes it uses exactly two and a half skeins or a little less than two and a half so I had to go and look online and I finally found another skein and it was the same colorway. This is the Autumn Bowers. I don't know if you can get it anymore, but maybe look around online because I know some yarn shops might still have it. But it's discontinued. This is a 
blend with silk and different breeds and it's just a really beautiful yarn and it has not it's not tweedy but it has some it's a little more speckled yeah little nubs of different uh, fibers i guess the silk also takes the dye differently so uh, and the 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 way this pattern has been received has just been completely overwhelming and wonderful and made me so happy because it's my first shawl design i never really made many shawls and i really i had this idea to make a shawl with this simple textured uh, body and a applied border and it just worked out exactly as i hoped for so it's been a really amazing experience and i'm so happy and i've seen it appear in a few make nines which makes me even more proud and yeah just been really great and talking about this one since there seems to be a lot of interest i made a little cal it's quite an informal uh, knit along it's just to knit together and to talk about the pattern as we go and i will try to help with questions in there as well so everyone can uh, have the help the can benefit from the comments i'm making uh, and it's in my rivalry group which you can find uh, below and it's um i will it will run for three months from the release date so uh, it's until march i think anyway all the info will be in the in the rivalry thread and i will try to collect some prices and add them in just to have something nice i already have one price which is over here and uh, i will talk a little bit more about this beautiful skein of yarn later so this is one of the prices and uh, also i have to remember to say i made some uh, tutorials for uh, video tutorials for the pattern so it has written instructions it has the charts and it has video tutorials um one of the parts that i thought would be very easy but i guess it depends if you are used to region reading your knitting and so on it's how to place the popcorn because i haven't described the whole row all the rows of the shawl and um, so i described the first rows and then you have to place them on your own which is really simple everyone said it's easy once you get into it but getting into it takes maybe a little more for some than for others depending on how you you work with knitting so i have a video explaining that and as i said in the beginning that video might i think i said i've been cutting a lot so maybe i haven't said it but um the yeah there's a video explaining that and it was just not working for some people it seemed to be working for others so i don't know what what that is about i made a uh, help a video to explain how i attached the border so that part is also has a little more help uh, I don't know if I would say this pattern is beginner friendly as such, but it, if you are okay with taking the time, watching the videos, reading the instructions carefully, I think it's okay for most people. The thing is just these twisted uh, stitches, little cables might be a little bit much if you're a beginner and also there's some more cables and, but I tried to explain it as well as I could. And I made a little video of how to do a tassel. So this is from the video I made. Um, it's the same technique as for this one. You can see I'm, they look a bit different. You can make them as you like. And uh, yeah, I just explain how to make this part so you don't have any knots or anything and how, many, how I wrap around and do things. So that video is free for everyone. The other videos come with the pattern, so they're private unless you buy the pattern. Just because I don't want to give everything away um, or put it on YouTube unless you buy the pattern. So they're free with the pattern. So those are the three designs. I don't know if there's anything else. Oh yeah, I wanted to explain a little bit more about the uh, my inspiration. Because the inspiration for this shawl, it's called Hüllebär. So uh, I know, again, I'm choosing Danish words with the Danish letters. Uh, Hüllebär means elderberry and uh, or elderberries it's uh, can be both plural and singular in danish and i just there's a little my camera is running out of battery i have to get the battery but the 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 elements in the shawl the little 
little nubs are inspired from the elderberries. So if you know elderberries, they're little black berries that you should never eat unless they have been cooked uh, for at least 20 minutes, but they make this beautiful soup or hot beverage that you can drink in winter. That's really good if you have a sore throat or yeah. Anyways, uh, so the berries are little, little tiny berries uh, and uh, they, the, the, the trees look very old, even if they're not that old, they have this very uh, twisted and old branches, which was my inspiration for with the cables. And then they have this uh, very distinct looking leaves. I mean, it's a tree that for me is very easy to recognize. So, so the, the leaves, the, the branches or the, the tree and the berries are all represented in the sh shawl. But I don't feel it's too literal, and that's always the hard part when you have an inspiration is to take the elements, but maybe not draw a tree with stitches. Uh, of course, these look like leaves very much, but um, but the rest is is yeah, just that was my inspiration for the shawl, and I really love how it turned out. And we took the pictures at nearby at the sea and it's just such a beautiful location and I really I'm happy with how everything turned out so those are the three um, new designs and there won't be any more designs in quite some time again because of maternity leave but uh, I'm really happy I managed to get everything out and then I'm lying because there's the, the design for Leine which is coming out in February but I already did all the work before now the very wonderful ladies of uh, of the magazine and people working there uh, they are busy busy getting the magazine ready um, so it is a lot of work behind such a magazine but it's totally worth it it's always so beautiful and such a such an experience being part of it so yeah i think i'm gonna eat a little bit and then i'm gonna come back and talk about my <laughs> as i said a lot of cuts i will talk about my finished objects which i think there's only one and some works in progress because we have works in progress and then i really wanted to talk about my make nine because i didn't make a make nine which might be crazy but i did and i am not sure if i should cut it into a sep separate video just not to make this too long so i will think about that when i'm editing but that's the plan i am done with my lunch and now i can continue this saga of a podcast um i have a finished object which i have shown on the on vlogmas i don't think i showed it on the podcast um this is knit out of used wool in the um, in two different colors so this is the natural the natural wool and this one is uh, over dyed so it's the same base but it's over dyed by old maiden aunt and I really wanted to use this yarn as you can see the uh, natural color is showing through so it has this very beautiful variegation or tonal color and I love the effect of the color work in this. It's of course not so easy to see the color work as if I used a more contrasting yarn with, but I just, yeah, yeah, the further I take it away, the more clear it is. I just really love this, um, gets this faded, like it's been faded by the sun, not faded in the way that I think most people talk about faded in the knitting world, but more like uh, faded by the sun, old vintage kind of look to it. And I love colorway looking, uh, colorway, color work looking like this. So I got this yarn also at EYF, and I have been waiting for the perfect uh, project to use it for. I tried using it for some salbu mitts that I showed, or mittens, and but I didn't like the contrast on those. I, for some reason, it didn't really work for that. Uh, so I think it worked out really well for the head. This is a pattern by Caitlin Hunter from Boyland Networks on Instagram and it is um, a free pattern on Ravelry, it's called the Aim True Head and when you see it on Ravelry I would never have picked it, it's not my cup of tea, uh, the way the colors have been put together, there's something about it that just doesn't, would never catch my attention 
but I saw it on Squirrel, Squirrel Pie Productions podcast um, on Dynamite Tujillo, uh, as she's called on uh, Instagram. Um, and she made a hat of her own dyed, hand dyed yarn and I just really loved it. So when I saw that, I just thought this would be perfect, or at least I thought it could be. And um, she talked about the hat being very long, and I had the same issue. So I made, I think, I made the latch, or it has, I don't remember anymore. It's, uh, I did it a few weeks ago. But I just, it has another repeat of this pattern before you do the crown, and I just skipped that and did the crown without. But it's still huge, so I will try it on. And it, I guess it's supposed to be a slouchy head, so that's not the problem. But it's there's a lot of all of this part. It's kind of disappearing because of the slouchiness. But I like that it's long in the pattern. It's worn, flipped up. But I also made the brim shorter. So actually, both the brim and the head is shorter. I guess if I do this, then you can see this part more. But then you don't see this part at all. So I feel that's a pity because I really like the this flower tiny flowers or what they are so I think I will just keep it like this and add a pom-pom I for the first time I thought it could be nice with one of those fake fur pom-poms so I will see what I will do with that um, or I will just make a pom-pom out of the leftover yarn but I haven't gotten that far it hasn't been that cold uh, lately and I haven't we normally take the car at the moment because I'm big and heavy in print, so uh, I haven't had so much chance to wear it, but here it is. I think it's beautiful, so um, yeah, it's a great pattern, it's free. Uh, I would just suggest if you want to um, have the brim up, maybe just don't do this part and just do it in a plain color or uh, fold it up or if you want to I really don't know what you just shorten it in some way <laughs> but I already shortened it both in the brim and on the top so it's just really long that's my only complaint about this but again with free patterns I it's just complaining about free patterns is for me yeah kind of pointless because it's part of the it being free I guess it might not be worked as um, much as a paid for pattern and it might be uh, it might not be re revised or looked into again if it has some mistakes so anyways it's a very nice color work hat and if you would do the the with a more contrasting yarn the pattern of course would show up better so so that's one of my works in progress and wait, my hair it's looking a bit crazy and um, I have I finished that some time ago then I've been working on um, a shawl design which I'm not gonna show you too much uh, it's just it's very simple so I'm just yeah, gonna show you a bit like this but I'm using this very beautiful yarn from Molview yarn uh, again yarn I got at EYF <laughs> I'm really going through the stash. I'm so happy because I'm actually using everything I bought and I was a bit uh, unsure if how it would be if I would just buy a bunch of things and not use them. I'm not ex necessarily using them for what I wanted to use them for. This, for example, I wanted it to be a uh, tenure, I think, but yeah, there you go. And this one is uh, hand dyed, naturally dyed with uh, eucalyptus and uh, I think it's matter or lack, but something, little stains of that, and I just, it's so beautiful. It has this purpley blue tint, gray, blue, with a little bit of purple, and then these little pink, rosy bits. Um, so yeah, I'm working on a shawl, as I said, and just, it's not gonna come, come out anytime soon, but I just really wanted to start it. So uh, that I've been working on that, and then I've been working on another shawl, and actually uh, kind of cast them on. <laughs> I 
I have totally lost track of how many times I had to start and stop this over. I hope you don't mind. It's this is this is what I can do. If not, there won't be any podcast. Um, but I think it's just when I'm up here and she knows she's not supposed to go. It's much more interesting. So, I mean, what can you do? Mm. So at least I got some hot tea because my tea had gone totally cold. I um yeah so that was my one finished object I finished a Santa hat that I think I showed in the podcast no I or maybe in the vlogmas um but it's in use so I cannot show that and I finished some other things here and there but nothing to show really um I have some works in progress that I wanted to share so one of the works is living in my mondim bag and it is um, knit out of the uh, lana grossa that i got some time ago and i talked about on the podcast so in this two colorways this is a black with the black tweed and this is a burnt orange cinnamon kind of tweed and i am working on the waiting for Henry socks which I think is quite fitting as I'm waiting for my own little baby they look kind of weird when I don't have sock bloggers and I don't own a pair of sock bloggers so I guess that's something to <laughs> get at some point um, it's simply because the pattern up here it's color work so that part is not um, yeah it's just standing on its own and down here it's uh, uh, three by one rib so this part kind of pulls together and makes the sock look very weird and wonky. Um, I followed the pattern pretty much, uh, pretty much. I made a few uh, changes. So again, it's the waiting for Henry socks in um, in the Lana Grossa tweed sock yarn. It is a pattern by Tabby from um, Hey Sister Yarn Co. And they have their own podcast. They are just the most wonderful sisters to watch they have excellent taste and they are really funny i generally don't watch many of the uh, t how do you say podcasts with more than one person i find they get too too talkative and too <laughs> which is funny because uh, i don't know i i'm i don't really enjoy them as much uh, it has nothing to do with the people it's just too noisy i like podcasts to be a little more calm but their podcast is a lot of fun and they're just very sweet and they have children interrupting all the time as well. So yeah, it's a pattern by her and she had a little uh, Black Friday sale. Was it Black Friday? She had a sale at some point and I just got the pattern. So uh, little changes I made. I made a two by two rib instead of a twisted rib because the yarn is so dark and I just didn't feel like bothering with the... Uh, one by one twisted rib. Um, I did a German twisted cast on, uh, and then I used a cream color, which I don't have here. I think yeah, it's over there somewhere. Um, it's a Tweedy cream of the same yarn, so just white with tweed specks. And I, yeah, followed the pattern here, here, here. Oh, the the change I did is I cast on sixty four stitches. I have a pretty broad. My legs are not that. The narrow or the broader calf so I like also I like to be able to put them outside the pants on the outside of my pants so I don't mind if the cuff is a bit bigger and I didn't want the color work to be in any way too small um so I used a 64 stitch count on a 2.5 I used magic loop for the top part then I used uh and I don't have them here, but I talked about it in Blockmas, and I was I have an episode all about the nine inch or the using the um, uh, um, Chiago in this case. I borrowed a set of interchangeable uh, mini Chiagos, and I just they, I didn't like them because the cord is I normally knit my socks with a, a fixed nine inch Chiagos, but I only have those in two point five, so I borrowed the other set, which has uh interchangeable so the cord is different it's much uh, softer and more narrow so it's really hard to hold on to when you pretty much have these minus minuscular needles 
Let me see if it's in here. No, it's not in here, but I, 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 again, I made a whole video about this, so I'm not gonna repeat everything here. I had a little rant about the Chiagu cable, but this is the cable that comes with the um, 2.5 uh, long, or how you say, fixed, normal needles. Um, and these are the lace. Uh, I really like them for sock knitting, but again, I didn't have them in the fixed 9 inch. So I was trying to do the color work with the interchangeable ones. I didn't enjoy that. So I will try to get a pair of 9 inch 2.5 for color work socks because I think 2.5 is preferable just to be sure you don't get it too tight instead of the 2.25. Um, and then when I got down here and you're supposed to do some increasing uh, because this has more stitch count than the... Um, rest of the sock a little or different stitch count um, I simply increased uh, sorry decreased um, until I had 60 stitches in this part and then I did the rest of the sock as I would normally do a sock with uh, 60 stitches which is my preferred um, stitch count I did uh, the heel recommended in the pattern is a I think a true afterthought heel or just an afterthought heel I didn't do that because I'm not good friends with the afterthought heel, but I did, um, I have partridge, uh, partridge heel, which is nice and squishy, um, and the contrasting color, and it's a heel flap gusset, and I picked up, I don't know if you can see, I picked up again with the left hand needle, and I twisted the stitches, maybe it's easier to see here, yeah, so it kind of get has this little uh, effect. Uh, they have not been blocked, so the yarn is folding a bit over itself for the fabric. Uh, but I really like how this works out. There are no holes here. Um, yeah, and I just did, I think I did the toe as called for. So, and I really love that it has the, the, the three by one ribbing on top, which makes it very nice and squishy. Working on these was a bit of a pain because the days are really short and <laughs> you cannot really see what you're doing in the black yarn but i don't think there are any mistakes maybe no it's not a mistake it's just the yarn so i think i managed to avoid any big mistakes in the ribbing and it all looks good so apart from that i really love the pattern it's fun so that's one and i think i showed one before but i have the second one that's all tangled up from the well being in the back and I have done the cuff again the same way so two by two and a few more stitches on top until here and I decrease down to 60 stitches so I think that's a good idea if you know you want want to be sure this is not too tight and also that because I don't this looks terrible I don't like color work stretched out so it shouldn't be stretched out it should have no ease um, or how you say, positive on, on zero ease, but not negative ease. So if you want to be sure, just cast on a few more and then go back to a normal stitch count for the rest of the sock. And so the heel, you can see how it looks like, and I'm about to turn the heel. And it's been hibernating a little bit because I had some other cast ons, which I will show you. Um, yeah, so I... I'm having a lot of fun with these while I'm waiting for my little guy to come um, and yeah I brought it to the hospital I went to the hospital again as you will have seen in the vlogmas I had a little uh, uh, episode where I had to go in for the whole day because I was not anything it wasn't anything urgent so they kept pushing me back and I spent pretty much the whole day in the hospital um, and I they had to try to turn the baby because he was not in the right position and it all went fine. So again, you can actually hear me talk about that in the last uh, Vlogmas episode, the last one. So, okay. Then I have been working on a very anticipated um, uh, cast on, which doesn't look that nice because now it's all scrunched up on the needle. Because it's... I, 
that's one thing I have to get now for hopefully in the sales or something is more cable uh, longer cables I don't know what happened to all my cables. I'm pretty sure they're stuck on some um, sweaters that are in hibernation but I'm running out of cables all the time the needles you can switch back and forth but I have not enough cables so anyways this is a very anticipated cast on because it's part of a cal and you couldn't you were not allowed to cast on until the full moon which was the cold moon uh, in December so the first full moon of the winter and it is part of a cal um, knit along hosted by two wonderful ladies um, Nicole from uh, the Gentle Knitter podcast and uh, Sarah from Fiber Trek uh, and the idea is to knit this shawl which is the head hedge witch shawl um, by and let me just check because I don't know why I cannot remember that wool and fawn so Nat from wool and fawn she's the designer behind this shawl and it's pretty much just a giant shawl with this texture all over and then in the end there's some garter garter um, a garter edging so I cast this on on the 22nd um, and have been knitting on this but again I was also knitting on the other shawl and some other things so it hasn't grown that fast but I'm still pretty happy with how far I've gotten and you knit from the garter tab here and this way so I should probably try to show it like this but I don't want the stitches to come off the needles and it's just this very beautiful texture that you actually knit on the reverse, so on the back and uh, on the wrong side, uh, however you like to say it. And it, the only thing about knitting on the wrong side is you have to pay a little more attention because it's, um, how should I say, it's, you cannot really see if you're placing them correctly from the reverse. If you look on the reverse, you don't see where they're placed. But what I like about this is you don't have those boring pearl, long pearl rows. So on the uh, you are doing the pattern on the wrong side and on the right side you just knit. So in that way it's really nice. You just have to pretty much pay attention when you start that you place them correctly. I'm not, I don't read the pattern or follow the chart after when you're just doing, it's pretty much the same as for this one. You just have an all over texture that, and you do increases. So you have to kind of, put it in as you go um, and I think it's very easy to read your knitting as there's one here then the next one the next row should be between and then so again like this one you have them in a little triangular shape um, diamond shape so yeah I love talking and I'm knitting this so there are two reasons why I'm really excited about this first of all it's a beautiful pattern and I really like to be part of this knit along because I admire those two ladies highly they both have podcasts so one is the gentle Knit gentle knitter podcast and the other one is the fiber track and if you haven't watched them just go check them out it's a lot about beautiful rustic wool and stuff like that and then yeah i really wanted to be part of the knit along but also i had decided i wanted to use my own gotland yarn so this is the lighter color of the gotland yarn that i had spun up and i kept for myself, I kept all the... I got a f bag with quite a lot of um, not complete skeins. So I guess in the end or in the beginning, if there's something wrong, they don't have exactly 100 gram skeins. So they wrote those were not... Uh, I didn't want to sell them. So I decided to keep all of them for, for knitting this shawl. So I have quite a few skeins in different sizes of the light gray. And I uh, have one in the charcoal. Or the medium gray this one is not light it's more medium and i have one of the charcoal that i will use for the you can actually see it here this is the charcoal so it's not a lot of contrast but it's enough it doesn't look in person it looks more <laughs> contrasty um and yeah i will use this one for the garter edge uh, so i was really excited to see how it would knit up and i think it knits up it's so beautiful it has this white like more white parts in or light gray and silvery and it just is so lively um, and Gotland yarn is I talked about it I'm not gonna 
go on and on about this yarn but it's just has this beautiful it's not very stretchy or flexible in the string i can actually not do anything with it but it just has this silky quality um and just gets a beautiful halo after some time working on it and i have my little progress keepers or stitch markers here that are from a bed of roses that i bought from a uh, as a necklace and a, I really like it. Unfortunately, they're not on my necklace at the moment, so my necklace looks a bit empty. But uh, these are little gemstones, and I think they're quite nice to have on on the work. They were also supposed to be stitch markers around the three, the the edge, but that for me is kind of pointless. I can remember those in the middle. It's a little harder. So I'm really happy with how this is knitting up. I not sure i will finish because the knit along is from full moon to full moon and i don't think i will manage to finish it up just because the baby is gonna arrive in the middle of that and yeah unless i have i will have to stay at the hospital for a few days but i still don't think i'm gonna be knitting that much so we will see uh so i'm working i'm changing between the two shawl patterns the one in mole view yarn oh i think i forgot to say about the mole view did i say it was a welsh mule four ply i don't think i said so but that's it uh, so i changed between those two because it's um they are very different in texture and i like to have the change and this one i only modification i did is i'm working on a much smaller needle so i'm working on a four millimeter which is a us6 and uh, I'm using that one because I know that the yarn knits up beautifully and that the Godland yarn is a DK light you can knit it as a light worsted but a DK I would say and um, and the pattern calls for a worsted but I don't mind if the pattern is a tiny bit smaller because in the the, the pattern as uh, made from the designer is very big and also I can just add in some more repeats because I don't see why not. It, the border is only a um, garter border, garter border, so it should be easy. For example, with this one, to apply the border and have the right to follow the charts, it's a little more complicated if you start changing it up. You can change it up, but just have to be aware um, if you start making changes to the number of stitches and so on. With this one, I think it will be a different story. Okay. I've been talking and talking and I'm pretty sure now that I will do my make nine um, for 2019 in another video but I have one last cast on which I started in this morning um, and it looks a little bit terrible so please let me try to <laughs> show it it is um, it's a rumba for my son uh, and it's by Petit Knits. Uh, it's the Lillebois romper or the Little Brother romper. And actually, yep. So, there is, should have buttons down here. There are buttonholes, two buttonholes. And this is the bottom part. So, you're doing kind of the front and the back. And I just joined. That's also why it looks a little confusing. But the main thing that makes it look terrible is the yarn, because this yarn is actually a very beautiful yarn. Let me see if I can show you the... Uh, it's a khaki color, but with a tweed, uh, tweed. So it has yellow, pink and blue specks in it. And um, it's a wool silk blend, which is very lovely. It looks like this because it has been saved from an old sweater and uh, i knit already one project with it. it it the sweater was striped with a light and a khaki so a cream and a khaki with the same kind of a uh, tweed effect and i since it was striped the, the yarn came out in million pieces that's why i have all these ends hanging and dangling and um and i knit a tuba sweater for my daughter which she's actually wearing still even though it's getting a little small um and i thought since i had some left of the khaki i would use it for this little brother romper 
and uh, it's actually part of my make nine <laughs> together with the, this shawl so I think I will talk a little bit more about it in my make nine uh, but uh, just so I'm not cheating completely for my make nine for 2009 19 yeah 19 <laughs> um, I am planning to make this in many sizes so I will make it again and again but uh, this is the newborn uh, size and uh, yeah it will look much better once it's been washed because as I said I just uh, reclaimed the yarn and I didn't wash it so it's very kinky um, but it's a very beautiful yarn Hundred, it's wool and silk as I said it's um, very soft and very nice for babies I feel and I'm happy I could get some the sweat I could get a second chance of life in as pair as children's clothes but it's just a little bit annoying to work with with all the loose ends because I have to yeah that's how it works um, and I think that's it I think that's it yeah that's it for my uh, podcast episode normal content and then I will make the other part but I simply have to have a little more uh, headspace and time to do it properly so either today later today or i will i will make it another day um because it was actually really fun to put together the make nine and i wanted to talk more about some of the yarns that are going to be used in the make nine or that i'm planning to use i'm it's more like a wish list so and i will talk more about that when i'm talking about the actual uh challenge or um yeah it's a challenge i guess uh, the make nine so uh but i'm not expecting to finish that's what i'm trying to say and i know it will change and i will have other things pop in there plus i have design ideas that i will be working on uh, i'm sure i can't help myself um, but it will just not be with the intention of publishing immediately i hope you all had a wonderful holiday or christmas if you celebrate that um and I really hope I can manage to podcast and keep in touch with you. But if I'm not able to put up full episodes or anything like that for some time, please find me on Instagram or on Ravelry. Uh, there's also another Cal that I forget to mention because it's running for a long time, which is the Tiny Knits Cal, which is a lot of fun where we talk about baby knits and so you can join that you can join the hula bear shawl cal i love seeing your finished um or finished all your progress on my design it's just so much fun and um also just to say hi there's an introduction thread um and i read all the little the the notes in their comments but i just can't always answer and yeah um just reach out to me on social media uh on Instagram I'm always fiber tails and that way we can keep in touch even though life will turn upside down for a bit um, I'm starting to get ready <laughs> it's starting to feel real and it's uh, an exciting time so that's all for today I will be back soon with my make mine bye